Ricard. Prosecutor's office has reopened legal proceedings. It is up to me to provide you with some objective information as to the investigations and a few number of decisions that have been made. The current investigations have been carried out over the past few days by the head of the legal police have enabled us to determine exactly what happened on Friday. 16 people were taken into custody, five of whom were minors. Nine of them have been set free. The family of the assailant, the three of the minors, and the companion of Abdelakim S. Seven people have been taken into further custody for further investigation. They are being accused of being accomplices, accomplices in an attack within a terrorist organization. They're also being charged with attacking a representative of the public, of the public sector, a public official. The two minors, 14 and 15 years of age, who were at Boisdolne School, they being tried as minors, minors within a terrorist organization and being interrogated. While our investigations have shown that the assailant knew the name and location of the victim, they did not have any means of properly identifying the person visually. They were actually able to identify the person thanks to the assistance of a number of middle high students who visually ID'd the future victim. And this is why two of those minors have been taken in for further investigation. It is. It has been shown that on the afternoon of the 16th, two of these people were actually in long, prolonged contact with the assailant, and that through their conversations, they were able to visually ID the victim, and they were paid for their services. The assailant arrived at the middle high school at around 2 in the afternoon and stayed in the vicinity offering 350 euros to any student who would identify the teacher. The students accepted the money and stayed with the assailant for some two hours until 4 p.m and said that they would split the money between other students. Some students refused to stick around. One of the students actually gave a physical description of Samuel Patti to the assailant. Because they wanted the teacher to apologize for showing them the picture of the Prophet Muhammad, and if not, then he was to be humiliated, or if not, beaten. We have been able to establish a certain amount of information thanks to video surveillance footage from cameras in the vicinity and also from a, an onboard camera on a police vehicle nearby. We actually have the moment where the students pointed out to Samuel Patti to the assailant as Samuel Patti was leaving the junior high school. Upon visual identification, we can see the assailant following his victim on foot. A number of people who came to the police station on the evening of the 16th have also been taken in for further investigation as possible accomplices. The first of these people, Azim E, 19 years of age, and having known the assailant for some time, was in constant contact with the assailant over the previous months and was also in contact the evening before the attack. In fact, the evening before, he purchased a knife from a nearby shop. He actually admitted having been asked to purchase a firearm. The second person, Livling, who lives in Evreux, name B, actually drove the assailant to the knife shop. And then the day of the events, actually took the assailant 
to a weapons uh, outlet to purchase two airsoft rifles, the same as those that were found on the crime scene. Anzarov turned up in his own vehicle to the junior high school at around 2 p.m. A third man, Yusuf C., also a close acquaintance of Anzarov, has been taken in for further investigation because of his close relationship to Anzarov. These three people have all show signs of certain levels of radicalization and this has been determined because of the close proximity to one of the local mosques and a close proximity to certain people spouting, spouting certain jihadist tendencies. To go over to the details of the exact timeline of the events, starting with the class on the 5th and 6th of October on freedom of speech and what happened the day of, it is clear that the teacher was clearly named on social media as being a target. The first class on the freedom of expression included a number of moments when the caricatures, the cartoons of Muhammad, were shown. This was on the 5th of October. The daughter of Brahim Se, one of the people taken to custody, was not in attendance in this class. She attended the class on the 6th of October, which was again on freedom of expression. It is this young female student who was meant to attend the class. However, she was, in fact, absent because she was ill. She is the daughter of Brahim C. And what she told to her father, Brahim C, is factually not true. That said, Brahim C published three messages on his Facebook account recounting certain facts that his daughter alleged to have been victim of, and he put his own contact details on that message. However, he, on that message, he pretended that his daughter was kicked out of the class because of the class on freedom of speech. However, his, his daughter being excluded and kicked out of class for 48 hours was for completely other reasons. In looking through the WhatsApp conversations, we noticed that there was a number of communication between Anzorov and Brahim C talking clearly about the teacher. In other communication between the two people, there is again reference of the teacher. Our investigation has showed that Bramsey had actually spoken with a number of his own contacts to find the specific contact details of the teacher. There was a meeting that was set up on the 8th of October between Brahim Se and the head of the school to try and set up a, a one on one meeting between the teacher and the student. And the, however, at the same time, there was a video, a 10 minute long video that had been published by Brahim Se on his YouTube account. And this video was published actually by Abdelakim S. We see the man standing in front of the school. In the video, we also hear a clear identification by name of the teacher. In the video, they say that the president of France is calling on all French people to hate and to despise Muslims. That is the claim that they made in the video. Throughout the video, Abdelakim S presents himself as being a man of religious authority representing all Islams of France. 
and says to be aware of exactly what had happened in the classroom and says to have been informed by the young girl of what happened in the classroom. And he says that they should be, they should go punished. And then these videos are again published again on the 9th and 10th of October. And again, making reference of the certain teacher publishing caricatures of Muhammad in a school, calling people to act. And we also came across a number of messages from Brahim Se, including the specific information of the teacher. And these messages are word for word exactly the same messages as messages that we found in the phones of other suspects. If, when we interviewed Brahim Seh, he admitted that he did uh, convey the messages that had been given by his daughter, that he did in fact uh, meet with Mr. Anzorov, and that telephone contact was established on the, on the 6th of October, and a number of other telephone contact moments were established right up to the 16th of October. Through our interviews of the other people that we are currently have under investigation, some say that they did in fact meet with Anzorov, some say that they did not. Abdelakim S said that he only wanted to have a civil outcome, that he only wanted the teacher to be punished in professional terms and did not actually want to see any form of violence and that he did not condone the acts of Anzorov. And he has actually been living in France for a number of years now. And if we look at his past, in 2004, he attended a non-official protest, protest and has actually been found guilty of a number of pro-jihadi comments in public arenas and has actually been found guilty of written written calls to hatred and jihad on the 20, in 2015. And he says that he is a true representative of true Muslims. Given the very specific context of the events, of the publication of the messages by Ibrahim Seb C on his Facebook page, we have a teacher that in class showed his students a naked picture of Muhammad. And then he said that this is what the teacher done, has done, and therefore we have to publish the specific details of that teacher. And that is what he did on his Facebook account. But further contextual elements include the attack that occurred outside of the Charlie Hebdo quarters at the end of September, which saw two people severely wounded. And it is, has been determined that the motivations behind that attack were the publication of those same images and those same cartoons. Between the 9th and 11th of September, there was a number of communication channels that were open between some of the suspects and representatives of Al-Qaeda. Communication channels that showed that they were coming at, speaking out against the publication of such images and calling on all those people who published such images to be murdered. The attack on Charlie Hebdo, which is now being tried at court, was for these same motives, the publication of those pictures. Therefore, Anzorov and the attack by Anzorov is very much in the same modus operandi. I would like to thank you for your attention. France